Okay, so I've just got doing this video just to go through the um, some of the things that can go wrong with uh, one of these LCD quartz watches, and um, quite a quite a lot of them really haven't stood the test of time particularly well, and uh, this is this is a good case in point. So I'm just going to point out some of the things that do go wrong with them, and uh, that's going to require me to have a pointer. And uh, most of my videos are unscripted, so we often forget to, to get certain parts that I need and all sorts of stuff. So just how many look here, straight away from the back there you can see that that's looking pretty ugly. So what's happened there is that the battery that sits right there, that has leaked all sorts of uh, fluids which have oxidized the contacts. One used to be there, which goes underneath and that's the other one there. Now what someone's done in the past is they've tried to solder that back onto the post. So there's a little post which is just there. And normally what the way these were constructed originally is that was dropped down and that post comes up there and it's a tube and when it gets hit on the top there it, it, it spreads apart. Oops, and uh, that keeps it uh, in place but what happens over time is that the uh, the corrosion eats away at the top and they just fall off so that's happened with both of the, the contacts here now what someone's tried to done you can do, tried to do and you can see this from here is that they've got a soldering iron in there and just tried to solder it back on so in this case uh, this movement's completely dead so I've got no cushions here or anything to uh, to protect it um, so, yeah, so they've had a go at repairing it and have been unsuccessful. Just having a look at a few other things there, that's the rate trimmer right there. So they're designed to be adjusted from the back. Now on these ones I can't quite see it through the camera, but um, quite often they're soldered so you can't adjust them, but I think on this one you can. So if you've got the right equipment to test accuracy with this sort of quartz watch, you can actually adjust that and make it more accurate. So just turning over to the front here and you've got the LCD screen. Now commonly what will happen when the battery leaks, not so much with these because they're protected by this, uh, this plastic, uh, I guess it's a monocoque really, um, which stops it from happening, but the acid will quite often go through there, it will get to the module and then it will get to the back of the screen and uh, you'll see a big circular, usually circular stain on the back there. Now sometimes that can be solved, sometimes it can't. Um, what happens, which we'll see in a sec anyway, is that just behind this screen there's actually a plastic uh, plate which is called the reflector plate. And uh, that is usually gold or silver coloured, depending on the, the colour of the the uh, case. So on this, in this circumstance, the case was a silver case. So you have a silver reflector um, just behind the screen there, which gives the colour of the screen. So the screens on either the gold or the silver models are actually exactly the same, but the only thing that changes it is the colour of the reflector at the back. So what we'll do now is we'll just take this off and I just have to get out from under the lens for a sec to actually get that so you're gonna miss my wonderful hands for a sec and I'm just gonna undo these screws because the actual the whole movement itself is actually held together through the screen so as soon as you've got that off that will enable you to access the rest of the movement now the reason they did that is to reduce the amount of parts in the movement and uh, obviously that's going to reduce the cost of it considerably. So earlier movements like this, they're normally built very similar to a mechanical watch. So they've got lots of uh, metal parts in there, very nicely made. And uh, this is the first sort of generation of them where they thought, well, let's uh, save some money and do all this sort of stuff at fairly low cost. So we'll just remove the screws there. What's actually interesting there, and that's catching in the light, is you can actually see the segments on the display. 
So the way an LCD display works is that uh, around the side there you'll see a reservoir of the equi of the liquid <coughs> excuse me that's inside and these little tracks there that actually allows the liquid to move through I'm not 100% sure what action but I assume it will be capillary action uh, into the segments so those segments uh, have a charge put on them uh, through the contacts through there and then the the liquid is drawn in there um, but yeah I mean I'm, I'm not speaking really with any scientific knowledge of the way it works but that's the way it works so when these originally came out they're actually uh, basically absolute top of the top of the line um, cutting edge technology of course these days we look at them and everything's got an LCD display in them but uh, when these came out in the in the mid 70s um, absolutely top of the line so before then what they used to use they used to use LEDs and these sorts of clocks and of course LEDs chew more power than the LCD display so you're still getting back to replacing the battery every every year or so um, but as soon as they went to LCD displays that uh, that improve, improved dramatically which was a, a major uh, reason why uh, the manufacturers were really looking at this sort of technology so being a little bit rough here I normally do this with a plastic screwdriver but I'm just trying to trying to save some time so now that now we've just got the uh, got the screen cocked there and you can you can see the display so it's a very thin piece of glass and you can see in there sandwiched all the uh, all the contacts. In fact, what I said before is probably slightly incorrect because you can see the the liquid, the darker part there. And um, as soon as there's a charge put on it through those through those circuits, it's pulled to that and it moves the screen or puts display stuff on the screen. Now on the back here, you've got these contact blocks. Now these contact blocks are quite inter interesting. Um, we probably won't get enough detail on them on this camera uh, right this moment to be able to show what they are, but they're basically a flexible contact. Now you may be able to see that they've got a whole bunch of zebra stripes on there, and uh, they're all they are is they're some sort of carbon material which is impregnated into rubber which allows them to be flexible. So you can see there where they sit, there's a whole bunch of contacts running along that screen. And that's how they get power to the to the screen module. So I'm just going to put that aside. So you can see there it's slightly tinted, um, which is probably to do, well firstly, um, just to improve the look, but also a certain amount of that tint probably comes from the, the LCD fluid now having a look back at the module again, we'll just get that contact block out of the way. So you've got the reflector there. Now the reflector just comes off. There we go. So it's a little bit difficult to work in front of this camera because I haven't got much room to work. But um, that's it there and all it is, it's black on the back. And uh, silver on the front. So. All they are literally is, I think, um, I can't remember the name of the material, but uh, sign writers use it to make signs. That's, that's literally what it is. And uh, instead of having it etched and having signs and stuff on there, they just use the raw material. So back to the module here, and uh, you'll see there, that's the, um, it's actually the contact for the, the buttons. Now I think I've taken the buttons out of this already which I'll just move the camera slightly. Yeah, so I've already taken the button contacts out um, but they actually just slide in the sides there. Which, um, just pull the camera back a little bit more, there we go. So all they do is actually contact against those posts to turn various functions on and off. Now just get one of those contacts here. I think I've got one. There we go. So that's that's the contact there. So all that happens when the button is pushed, they go in like that, and you push the button and it bends. 
just like that. And it uh, contacts one of these posts, posts down here, which I'll just pull the camera out so you can see. That's it there. That's, that's the contact post. So what happens is, just take that away. Um, so what happens is that um, that main sort of, I guess it's a processor in there, uh, says, okay, so I've got contact from that post over there. That means I have to switch to mode whatever. Um, so it's all very basic stuff. If I just get my toothpick again there. So what we have here is uh, you've got some surface mount components. Now they're probably capacitors or resistors or something. They're not actually marked. Um, what you've got there, that is some sort of power regulator to the battery. Now, that there is actually the crystal module. So, inside there, there's a quartz crystal that's shaped like a tuning fork. And the vibration of that is what regulates the, the, um, the time on this. So, they regulate these oscillate at 32 kilohertz. And then there's some circuitry on that chip that's under there, which... Um, says okay so for every x amount of oscillations i'm going to move one second um, which is the fundamental understanding and i'm saying it in a very simplistic term but that's the fundamental understanding of how a um, quartz watch works so those contacts there are actually for the alarm module now they're attached that's actually attached to the case so you can't take that out or well, you can but it's not easy and um, that's just a piezo buzzer. So the piezoelectric effect is, I don't have the information on me right this second, but you can look it up. Um, but when you put a small voltage across a um, thing made out of piezo, um, it will make a buzz. So it'll oscillate or vibrate. And uh, piezo speakers are used in all sorts of things, particularly low power, because they don't use much power. So most low power... Um, bits and pieces will use a piezo buzzer so yeah there's not too much else to say here um, probably some of those capacitors do trimming and stuff like that so trimming of the timekeeping or trimming of uh, voltage or some other function on there and uh, there you have it so this is one of the the first low-cost ones that they made so they're all made as a monocoque not designed to be taken apart they were designed to be replaced as a full module um, some of the earlier ones are not so much like that. You can take this whole module <clears throat> or circuit off and replace it. You can also do that with some of the later ones, but around this period they sort of said, okay, well, we're just going to make them as a block and you just replace the whole block if it goes wrong. Um, that means that a lot of watches from this series, um, this one's a, it's a A134, so a lot of the early A series watches, a lot of them are dead. Uh, the modules are very hard to find, um, so often you have to get another watch and get the module out of that to replace it if it goes wrong. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of them look pretty good, <clears throat> so you're um, motivated to. <clears throat> excuse me, I got a frog in my throat. Um, <clears throat> so you're motivated to look for a replacement module and swap them over. Uh, half the time the screens are okay, half the time they're not. Um, if it's just a bad reflector, I wouldn't see that as a as a killer if you're looking at one um, you can I, I think you could probably spray that with some hobby paint or something to get it looking good again if it's got black marks all over it um, but yeah um, fairly fairly basic at the at the end of the day um, the IC on there um, at the time again they were um, cutting edge technology um, Seiko pretty much pioneered a lot of this sort of stuff and um, yeah, that's why you can buy such wonderful products at such low cost now was, was really the IC. Um, if you look at some of the sort of uh, contemporaneous Swiss efforts, they're a lot more complex than this. They've got just bits and pieces everywhere. The wiring is, is just disastrous. So Seiko really had the edge here when they were making these. Um, the Swiss pretty much got their act together not that long afterwards and started doing a a similar sort of thing.
but uh, yeah so um, there you have it there's not too much more to say about these because they're really um, basic some of these do have a light on them I don't think this one does but the light normally sits in there um, they use a, a tiny grain of wheat bulb which well, it's actually a grain of rice or something which is extremely hard to find but you can normally get them out of a scrap watch and uh, yeah so I'll end the video there and this is just a, a quick look into the the Seiko A134 but really all the watches from this series and this around this time um, of the same construction are exactly the same inside just the IC has different features on it um, and yeah sometimes different buttons and things like that so I'll leave it there and thanks for watching